Hello, I'm Florine Hurdle, and welcome back to a new episode of Raising Children on APSU TV. Each show will bring you parenting tips and special insight on children and their thoughts. As parents, we need to love, guide, support, pray for, and educate our children. I have a seven-year-old myself, so I've realized that I don't always have the answers that are needed. And on today's show, we are going to discuss music education for our children. This is a topic that many parents desire to start early, but often find that the cost and when to start is a challenge. And some even find it difficult maintaining as their children mature. Many parents may not even think about this topic hardly at all, which leads to the fact that most children across the United States are being tested heavily in subjects like reading, language arts, and math, while other subjects like visual arts and music are being cut out. So today we are joined by Dr. Eric Branscombe, coordinator of our very own Austin Peay State University Education Department, to give us some insight and information to help us to train our children, as well as us as parents, on how music education will increase our children's ability to learn better and to see our world in a whole new light. We will discuss why music education provides more opportunities for both parents and their children and offers amazing hands-on learning and experience in aspects of music. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Brands. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. No problem. No problem at all. So tell me, uh, what is music education like for children? Music education for young children is a number of different things. First, it is just experience and experience to the world around them and young children learn through so many different receptors they learn by seeing by touching by tasting by hearing and simply for example by giving something that makes noise to an infant teaches them that when they shake this thing it makes noise therefore they have a little bit more control over their environment and also when they do that they begin to experience the world of creativity and that's another great thing that music can do for young children when they shake this thing it's make no it makes noise therefore what else can I touch or mess with and how does that change my world around me uh, music education for young children is also an outlet most kids can express things through singing or through playing an instrument or through movement they can express things that they may not have the vocabulary to express so it allows for them a connection and an outlet. Music education is exposure. So much of our world is just innately musical and by just exposing children to all different types of music, you are letting them know all about the world around them. And then last, for a small group of kids, music education is preparation. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite words for young kids is promise and potential. You never know who's going to grow up and become what. So for some of our kids, you're actually preparing them for what may become their careers in music. Wow, yeah, uh, I would have to say my son is definitely that one because sometimes he may not be able to say it, but if you put on a song and he can dance it and stomp it away. So, um, well, we'll be right back after this with more. What was your excuse? I couldn't make it to classes on campus. I didn't want to be the old guy in class. I didn't think I could afford it with my GI Bill benefits. Work was my excuse. Austin Peay State University is putting an end to the excuses. You've been in that desk for years, waiting for the next bell to ring. Now it's time to stretch your legs and your limits. Get up, get moving, get on with your life at Austin Peay. Come on, let's go. On in. Let's go. Go. Come on in. Got a lot more room here. Oh, Alright, so you're at the game. Cheer like a man, man. When you realize you're the only one screaming, let's go pee. And the guy to your right is giving you serious stink up. And that is exactly why you have to join the Govs Club. For as little as $100, you can get VIP parking and primo seats with loyalty maniacs who will help you cheer, heckle, and high-five your way through every minute of high flying, heart pounding, and your seat govs action. Get in the game, get in the govs club. Ah, 
lot of different people. But you can be one more. And if everything's golden, there's no better way. There's no better way. Well, before the break, we were talking to Dr. Eric Branscombe, coordinator from APSU Music Education Department, and he teaches undergraduate and graduate courses in music education, and he supervises the music student teachers. He also directs Camp Granada and is the co-director of Watataga uh, Arts Academy. His music education has taken him to parts of Dallas and Waco, Texas, and before that, seven years as a preschool and elementary music school teacher in Miami, Florida. Well, Dr. Branscombe, so earlier we were talking about, uh, you know, what music education mm -hmm. was. And so why is it that is it important for parents and children to have music education? There are several different answers to that question. And the first one is the, the more important scholarly, researchery sounding one that a lot of music teachers like to cite. And that is that the brain is just naturally wired for math, for science, for all these different languages, for all these different ways of studying. The music is, all, or the brain is also naturally wired for music. Mm -hmm. So it's just a part of brain development for young children. But that answer makes sense to adults. It doesn't make sense to kids. <laughs> of course. For kids, what I say is that children are innately musical. And if you watch young children play in the playground, the little girls do the Miss Mary Mack thing. <laughs> uh, when the boys are picking teams for football, they all put their hands in and bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. Yes, so I that remember just, those. <laughs> that just reveals that kids naturally play through music. And so music education links to and connects to just how they experience their world as kids. And then as they mature and grow, we all as adults connect to music in one way or another. So it just prepares them for that. Okay, well you're talking about as they grow, so we wanna get them involved and things like that. So you're a part of this Camp Granada. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about that camp and what age group it gears to and, and things of that nature. Camp Granada is for elementary school kids. It's a one week day camp hosted here on campus. It started about seven years ago when I was teaching elementary music and I began to observe every summer that all the dancers went to the dance camp and all the athletes went to athletes camp and all the music kids became couch potatoes for the <laughs> summer. Wow. <laughs> so kids needed a musical outlet, a way of involvement, a way of musical enrichment. And Camp Granada, I think, fits that bill really well. It's very much structured like a summer camp, so it's not your traditional music lessons. It's a lot of outdoor games and what you might call PE style games, but nice. they all teach music objectives. Cool, I like that, that's nice. Um, so with that, uh, we go into the next age group where you know I'm, I'm kind of like growing up, I wanna be a mm -hmm. teenager and I'm getting into high school. And so I noticed that the camp, Watatunga? Watauga Arts Watauga. Academy. Yes, and you're involved with that being the co-director. How does that help keep them involved in the music? That is a brand new program offered for the first time this coming summer here at APSU, and it is an arts enrichment, not just music enrichment, Wow! but an arts enrichment program for high schoolers in music, theater, art, and dance, and obviously music. Wow. So it's going to be a two-week residential program for students to come and be involved and learn all about, learn all about their art and their craft. Wow, well how exciting to maintain maturity in this and that's great. Um, and then you were talking about arts and so we have here at APSU, I see that you and the, well not you per se, but the music department and uh, C uh, Community School of Arts kind of partner mm -hmm. together um, in regards to the music. How do they work together as a partnership? The Community School of the Arts offers just about every type of music lesson to just about every age group from really young children all the way through adults who want to come and participate in an ensemble or learn an instrument or learn how to sing better. So what we try to do is get our music majors involved as teachers. A lot of our faculty also teach in the community school. And just really making the community aware that we're here, we exist, and we don't just exist for college students. <laughs> exactly. We exist for the community. Well, that is great. I'm definitely thinking about for my seven-year-old how to get him more involved in the arts and in music. Like you said, it's so important uh, in regards to that. Uh, what can a uh, parent do as far as how to access that, as far as you know, signing up and things like that, whether it's for Camp Granada or you know, the older children or mm -hmm. through the Community School of Arts, how do they do that? All of that is available online, apsu.edu slash CSA, that stands for Community School of the Arts. 
And also the director, Matthew Burns, is always open to answering questions and helping people find out how they can get their children involved. Okay. Um, have, are you associated uh, with parts of that? Do you give any instruction and things of that nature? I'm the director of Camp Granada, and so I oversee that program. Also in the spring semesters, we have a homeschool music program, and I'm in charge of that. And we have our music educators, or our music education majors, teach lessons to homeschool kids who come. And that's for uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, in that camp, do we, uh, since you mentor and watch uh, graduate teachers or uh, mm -hmm. children, students here at Austin Peay, excuse me, do that, do you, do they also involve them in the camps and things like that? Do you help oversee them to get them involved with the community and the younger children? Yes, there is a training process where I meet with our students who are going to work and of course we only pick the best students to serve as teachers and they are given a curriculum and they're given several weeks for practicing those lessons and how they're going to teach those lessons. Uh, we also have a few graduates who come back and teach, and these graduates are now uh, music teachers in the community. And then some of our faculty also come and serve as teachers. Oh, wow, how exciting. Um, so in regards to this, uh, in the continuation process, because I know for me as a parent, it can be difficult. You may start out early where um, the child is like, say you start with maybe drum lessons mm -hmm. or something like that, and they are excited about it and things like that. What is maybe your advice as far as, what if the child says, well, you know, mom, I kind of like the drums, but I'm really leaning towards the piano, I want to try that. But, you know, cost and money and things like that can be, you know, sure. a hindrance. How do you kind of motivate us as parents to keep <laughs> them involved without having the cost be so wore down? I think it is so very important to allow kids to experience those different things in music. Pardon the word things. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but just by learning to play drums, it teaches them I'm good at that and I'm not good at that. And they can try other venues and find where they really get plugged in. There is so much they can do in the schools or in the community or even at home where you don't actually have to buy an instrument. You don't have to have a formal set of lessons just as the kids are trying it out. And most pawn shops and the local music stores will let you come in and just try the instruments out until you figure out if you're actually going to like it. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't even think about pawn shops or going to uh, the stores like that. Um, and maybe, uh, would Walmart even be a suggested place if they have any musical instruments? I mean, I know everybody shops at Walmart. I mean, it's a place where you get everything. So I just <laughs> try to make it a one-stop shop. But. Uh, a danger of that is most of the instruments that are made for a store like that, they're really made by toy companies, not instrument mm -hmm. manufacturer companies. And so a recorder, for example, it's a great beginning instrument, but the ones that you find at stores like that, they really sound like they're made for a store like that. <laughs> and so it kind of turns kids off when they can't be successful on this instrument, when it's really the instrument, not the child. Oh, that's true. So no going to Walmart. <laughs> no going to Walmart, parents. No going. Um, so uh, as far as the stores here in the local area, are you familiar with maybe a few of them that we may be able to go to? Mary's Michigan? Music has a very wide selection of guitars, keyboards, drums. They also have a large inventory of band and orchestra instruments. And perhaps you've seen the little tiny violins for really young kids who want to begin. There's a program called Suzuki that can start children on violin from as early as two years old. And they obviously have the really small scale instruments for the young children to hold. Wow. So Mary's Music Mary's covers all of that. Okay, well Mary's Music, everybody, don't forget Mary's Music. Um, that's interesting, that small of a violin and even at two years old, well, I, I don't know what more to say than we might have to go out and go shopping for Christmas for some instruments, but we'll be right back after this. You're a lot of different people. But you can be one more. And if everything's golden, there's no better way. There's no better way. It doesn't have brute facts and it doesn't let you just regurgitate material and definitions. You search and you search and you search and you eventually do find some answers, but it's really the search that's so much fun. One of the big advantages I find here at Austin is a small class like this, five, six, seven people, we have access to a full professor. It's a small college, the professors are really engaging, 
and uh, me and my classmates had a lot of really good discussions. The professors at Austin P in philosophy are amazing. You have Dr. Randall, Dr. Rogelow, and Dr. Michael, and they all work very, very hard. It's a very small department, but because it's small, it's also very close-knit. I'm Mark Michael. I'm a professor of philosophy. If you're looking for a challenging program, I invite you to come and talk to us. Well, welcome back. We're here with Dr. Eric Branscombe. And so earlier we were talking about the importance of music education, and then we got into the different um, programs that are out there to be offered um, by yourself or even in their local area where they can get involved, like in the Community School of Arts. Uh, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to go home and tell my son today, look, mommy got a list of places that you can <laughs> go for the summer, or even throughout the school year, and get him involved in some music. Um, so how can we relate music even to life lessons? I know you're talking about how as an infant we hear the sound and we like touchy-feely things, <laughs> again with the things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but how can we relate this to uh, life lessons? I think the answer to that is, the way I describe it, music is a synthesis activity when you're involved in music, you're not just doing music. Music is innately mathematical. Music innately teaches language and history and social studies. And especially for young kids, music is very much a social skills activity. Simply the tenacity or the work ethic of sitting down to learn how to play an instrument or sing a song, that work ethic carries over into your ability to sit down and study for a test or learn how to ride your bike. Those types of skills that kids need. Also, most music classrooms have much more, many more children than there are instruments. So kids have to learn how to sit down and take your turn and wait for mm -hmm. your turn. And then when you get the instrument, you have to play it the right way. It's not just hitting a drum. Right. But through that, they learn a little bit of the self-control and playing on a steady beat instead of just randomly <laughs> whacking at the thing. So <laughs> there's a lot more to it than just music. That is awesome. That is awesome. So in your music time period, um, you had the ability to write some books. And mm -hmm. so I would like our viewers to see about these books. The first one is called Career Advising, a guide for students, parents, and teachers. Um, you can purchase this book at the, uh, I'm sorry, please Roman forgive me. Roman.com. Yes, Roman.com, please forgive me. Um, tell us a little bit about this book and what gave you the inspiration to write it. That book came about from a series of questions that I got from my college students, constantly coming in, asking about what can I do? I don't think that I'm really cut out to be a music teacher and I may not be good enough to be a performer, but what else can I do in music? Wow. And so that question reveals, number one, they just need to know what are the music jobs available. And number two, there's so much more to being a good teacher. There's so much more to being a good performer than just being able to play your instrument or sing well. So what is it that people need to know about themselves that will help them figure out which music career is best suited for them? Yeah. And so all of that resulted in that book. Well, I might need to advise myself in this book a few times. <laughs> I'm not musically inclined, but it might help me with some tips and things as far as directing my child, so that might be good. Um, you also wrote a series of other books. We have Listening Activities, okay, the Essential Listening Activities. Then we have uh, Essential Rhythm Activities. Uh, let's talk about these first. Uh, these are soft, I like them, and they're very mm -hmm. colorful, so tell us a little bit more about these. Those books, and then the third one you have there on the table, okay. all resulted in compiling activities and games and lessons that I did in my classroom where I wanted to try to find ways to teach rather than just singing out of a book or playing an instrument. Kids are very hands-on, tactile people. And I've discovered if you use the word game, you can get kids to do just about anything. <laughs> yes. So a lot of those are the first one, the rhythm activities. It's mm -hmm. helping kids learn how to read rhythms, how to read notation for beats and rhythms, and then playing certain things on drums and other instruments. Okay. The other one, there is so much great classical music out there, classical meaning what we might hear from an orchestra or an opera or ballet. And those are just activities to help expose children to that kind of music in a way that might excite them a little more than some lessons might. 
Okay, um, and with listening, um, we know we talk about uh, children at a younger age, like mm -hmm. even when we're carrying them in the womb. What is your thoughts behind doctors always saying that, you know, you need to, you know, have your child listen to classical music, it's good for them. But why? What are your thoughts on that as a You have teacher? to be very careful how to answer that one because the common quote is that music makes you smarter. <laughs> yes. And there's <laughs> not necessarily that strong of a connection to it, although I shouldn't say that because that quote really does support music. Yeah. But really, there is just a connection between music and a lot of other ways of learning. So music becomes a powerful way of learning other subjects. And to reveal that, I commonly ask people a group of three or four questions. Can you name the first five presidents? Mm -hmm. Can you name the first five colonies? Can you name all of the continents and all of the oceans? Wow. When I give those three questions, most people cannot answer them. The last question is, can you name five songs that you learned as a child you can still sing? Wow. When I ask that question, people go Jingle Bells, Silent Night, Twinkle Little Star, the ABC song, and they just keep going on and on. Wow. And that reveals there's just something about music that connects to us as young children. No one sat down to purposefully teach us those songs, but people did sit down to purposefully teach us the continents and the presidents. Mm -hmm. But we remembered these things while yes. we may not remember those things. That's very true. So you're talking about the game, and I want to make sure that everybody sees this one. This one is called the Music Board Game Workshop Book. And my son is all about games, and we have game night on Friday night, so I'll be playing a board game tonight or mm -hmm. a physical game on the Xbox Connect. And so I will have to probably stretch beforehand, but this will stretch his mind, so to speak, uh, because it is a board game. So tell us a little bit about this book. Most of those games in there are games that you can create yourself by copying what's in there and gluing it to a sheet of cardboard. And then from your craft drawer, or every kitchen has a junk drawer, where yes. you can just get little <laughs> things that serve as place markers, and they're board games that teach or reinforce, reinforce music concepts. Awesome. All right. So we definitely want you guys to get this book as well. Um, we want to make sure that you can purchase it as well. So make sure you check out the website that is on the lower part of your screen, the www.alfred.com. We definitely want you guys to get these for your children. So last but not least, let's talk about us as parents. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'm not so much musically gifted, so what can I do to maybe incorporate music in my child's life since I don't have those skills? Sure. The first thing I encourage parents to do is unlearn the mindset of I'm not musically gifted. Okay. I think that music <laughs> is just a natural part of who we are, and we know more about music than we think. We all can recognize movie soundtracks. We all sing along with our favorite song on the radio, mm -hmm. and for young kids, that's all they need. They don't need us as parents to sound like opera singers. They yeah. just need to see <laughs> us enjoying our participation with music. And I've got a group of books up here, all of which, they're not written as music books, but they can definitely incorporate musical skills. Over on the far side is um, Hand, Hand, Fingers, Thumb. About every other page says, dum, diddy, dum, diddy, dum, dum, dum. Nice. But <laughs> all of these books are books that can be read with a steady beat, and okay. kids can read along and learn to, in a sense, read the book through that steady beat. Okay. The next one, brown bear, brown bear, what this do you here? see? <laughs> I see a yellow cat looking at me. Wow. And again, just reading it to the steady beat. Most Dr. Seuss books and a lot of the Eric Carle books, brown mm. bear, baby bear, panda bear, they all can be read to a steady beat. And then chicka chicka boom boom, will there be enough room? That's an alphabet book that you make teaches. It sounds so great. Steady beat. <laughs> and this last one over here is just a classic called Going on a Bear Hunt. And they do this a lot at summer camps where the kids get yeah. to incorporate body percussion and all the different sounds of walking through the grass and I swimming guess. through. So it just yes, instills I remember in this kids story. <laughs> some very innate musical skills. And I think especially here in the Nashville area, most people can at least play a little bit of guitar. And the songs that we learned as kids can become great teaching tools. So I'm used to singing with little kids around me. This is a little bit awkward. Okay. But a very well-known song is called Six Little Ducks. And it says, six little ducks that I once knew, fat ones, skinny ones, fair ones too, but the one little duck with the feather on his back, he led the others with his quack, quack, quack. Wow. With that song, all you have to do is change one word and let the children get involved. I want a different animal. Some kids might say a dog. So we sing, six little dogs that I once knew, fat ones, skinny ones, fair ones too, but the one little dog with the feathers on his back. And right there, the kids all break into laughter because dogs don't have feathers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so through this song, you're beginning to teach some very basic science concepts about this animal has this characteristic, this animal does not. 
and also changing the song. He led the others with his quack, quack, quack. <laughs> Dogs don't quack. Exactly. So what else might we change in that song? He led the others with his bark, bark, bark. <laughs> Um, also in that song, you can change the animal like a turtle. He led the others with a shell on his back. Very he nice. led the others with his turtles don't make a sound. They don't. I so was getting ready to be like, um, <laughs> I was trying to figure it out. Children have to really think about how else might you change the song. When I've done that one in the past, it's he led the others going really slow. Oh. So you're teaching the children basic music vocabulary that's also part of natural life and living life, going fast, going slow, high, low, and so many other types of words. Wow, well, I'm very excited about this. When he started with that pat, 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 uh, that really brought back to my remembrance of what it was like to be a child and hear that story. So I'm very excited about that. We'll be back after this. The military forces of the United States have defended our country. The Revolutionary War produced battlefield heroes and statesmen. Our national unity was settled by the Civil War. America strode onto the world stage with the Spanish-American War and to turn the tide in World War I. American military forces were instrumental in World War II and distinguished themselves in Korea and Vietnam. American military might led to victory in the Cold War and today as the lead in the global war on terror. Military art may be the art that enables all other arts to flourish. Study the history of that essential art. Earn an MA in Military History at Austin P. State University. Let's go P! Let's go P! Let's go P! Let's go P! Austin P in the last two years has added more opportunities for students to study abroad, um, including additional exchange program opportunities for students to study abroad for an academic year or a full semester, and also short-term study abroad opportunities for that student that can't afford to be gone for more than a few weeks. For one, you get an opportunity to live in a foreign country. I got to travel around Europe and have a great time all while I'm earning college credit. Tremendously, tremendously mind broadening Learn the language and um, I was always fascinated with the culture and the people. First hand experience on the culture, I got to taste the food. So if you're looking for a great experience. For a great experience. So if you're looking for a really great experience, come take a look. Come take a look. Come check out the study abroad program. Well, welcome back. Today, we have been talking to Dr. Eric Branscombe from our very own music education department for his valuable information and uh, education on children participating in music. If you are interested or have any questions, please feel free to contact the Department of Music or check out the website at www.apsu.edu slash music or by email with Smith N, like Nancy, at apsu.edu. You can even call at 931-221-7818. Teaching children about education of music at an early age can definitely develop them into a well-rounded adults in the future, as well as parents like myself. It is our place to train them and guide them in this portion of their upbringing. Go check out the Department of Music. They have a list of programs and activities, or even if you're not here in the Clarksville area, check out your local area for ways to get your child or your children involved in the music education. In this season of Thanksgiving, please don't just be thankful for food and for time off, but be thankful for the people you are with celebrating. So a special thanks to Dr. Branscombe and all of you for watching. I'm Florine Hurdle for Raising Children. See you next time. Have an awesome day.